Hello, everyone, and welcome to the world of the International Fab Talks. We are connected once again with you, my dear friends. Of course, today, our special celebrity and guest is a wonderful person, a person who wants to give his very best, no matter who you are. You will really develop your knowledge and skills from this person. We could learn a lot from the wisdom that he is going to share with us. Now, you must be wondering as to who is this special personality who is joining us on our session today. He is none other than Dr. P.K. Rajiv Sir. He is joining us all the way from Mumbai, Maharashtra. And he is the CEO of Sales Krita Consulting firm. It's a beautiful firm. It's a global organization where they connect not only with people of India, but people across the world, you know, benefit from this beautiful consulting firm. Hello, sir, and welcome to the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being a part of our session, sir. The first thing I'd like to thank you for accepting the invitation to the International Fab Talks. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. With your permission, I go ahead and share your profile, sir. Yes. Sure. Thank you very much. My dear friends, it's always a honor, a privilege, and of course, our responsibility to share the profile of our celebrity and guest. He is with us. He is Dr. Rajiv. Lovingly called us Dr. Rajiv. Prior to work, becoming the CEO of Sales Krita, Dr. Rajiv was in Mercury International for 16 years as a principal consultant and played an active role in many consulting projects and enabled organizations to implement them very well, all the different aspects. And in addition to design and delivery of training programs for many corporates across industries uh, in Asia and Europe, Sir has also been actively focusing on bringing about a beautiful balance in every individual who he comes in contact with. It could be on a personal space, it could be on the professional space as a trainer, as a consultant. And friends, he has also been actively involved in customer acquisition. This is very important. The, the core quality for a person who is into business or wants to learn the skill of connecting worldwide. You know, customer acquisition is one important thing. Sir focuses on customer retention. That is the next important thing. Training and designing, delivery and post-training support. This is the need of the art. Post-training support also, sir, specializes and project management in various subjects, including sales, sales management, customer service, and customer service management programs, etc. And our celebrity and guest has also mastered the latest art, like many of us are still laid back. This is called as the virtual training workshops. After this uh, attack of COVID or Corona, most of us have really jumped into the online stream and sir has really aced it. He has acquired that skill and art of virtual training workshops and hence he is able to connect with people across the globe. And friends, he has an extensive experience independently managing and serving several industries such as automotive, information technology, FMCG, consumer durables, material, uh, building materials and office products, uh, real estate as well, housing and commercial properties. Uh, to add to that, the most important thing, healthcare, BFSI services, media, engineering, uh, capital equipment and industrial consumables, hospitality, etc. And sir is a great facilitator of the board-based Selemi uh, uh, simulations. If I get that right, Belbin behavior workshops, excellent. LIFO, what is this LIFO? Life orientations, instrument and acclaimed master facilitator and mentor of, guess what? Train the trainers. So here is a trainer who trains other trainers to develop their skills. We all require that at one point of time to upgrade our skills as a trainer. So here, sir, is a master trainer in this aspect. He is also a personal coach. This is really lovely. If you would like to have a personal coach, you definitely should consult Dr. Rajiv. He will be there with you to guide you. He is a personal coach for many of the CEOs and top management team members from diverse industries. And prior to Mercury International, Dr. Rajiv has over 21 years of sales and marketing management uh, experience in the healthcare industry. Wow, so such a rich experience that you have. Wonderful. Sir is also an author. And yes, an author of what? Uh, so many books. Hybrid Selling Decoded is one. Consulting, Facilitating and Training Skills is the second one. 
conceptualizing and designing workshops and as well leadership coaching and friends uh, sir has completed his phd that is really great he has completed phd guess in what friends in training and training effectiveness with a focus on sales training he is an alumni of iima general uh, management he's completed his bachelor's degree in chemistry and masters in business administration and a postgraduate uh, in advertising as well sir is also a visiting visiting faculty he has played a major role in updating students both of the mba stream and as well as pharma management uh, students as well even them sir has focused on these two important ones the need of the r one belongs to the healthcare sector another belongs to the business field that's really nice sir and especially has been helping them for their project work uh, during their final year they have project works and sir has been guiding them and mentoring them very well his teaching methodologies incorporate concepts of adult learning by format bernice mccarthy if i'm getting all of that right and nlp by dr richard bandler published and presented many papers on training and training effectiveness as a part of his phd coursework and guess what in india and international journals in indian and international journals my friends i'd like to just take a pause now and stop there's much more to share about our guest and celebrity dr rajiv if i do all the sharing then who will really be here to share more the real you know the essence of understanding who is dr rajiv we'll get to know directly from him Hello, sir, and welcome to the session. Sharing your profile was really a beautiful uh, feeling, and it really opens our eyes as to many of us are wasting our time. But there are people like you, there are unsung heroes like you, who have given their very best to the world and still continuing to do your best, wanting to do your best and reach out to many people. Hats off to you, sir, for all the contributions till date. Thank you, yes, sir. Thank you, and thank you for being so humble uh, to share the time with us today. So we'd like to know who is the real Rajiv sir. <laughs> sure. First of all, thank you so much for the introduction and the wonderful introduction that you have given about me. If I have to say in one word, Dr. Rajiv is a learner, and I wish to be a learner all through my life. <clears throat> so, what is the premise to this? The premise to this is, I am sure you must be knowing a concept of I know and I don't know. I know what I know is very less. What I don't know is many. And one more element to that is, I know I don't know is extremely crucial. So therefore, it is important for me to know many things because what we know is only a handful. What we don't know is portion full. So that's the reason why I would like to be a learner and I would like to be defining myself as a learner. Excellent, sir. That's really wonderful. That's really nice. As you said, the things that we know is just a little and the things that we don't know is really so much that we need to know. And learning is the most important thing for you. And it will be for all of us. I accept that, sir. My dear friends, have you seen how sir is upgrading his skills and wants you to upgrade your skills as well? There is a message that you've shared when you introduced yourself. So a learner all the way. That's really nice. Dear sir, We'd like to know as to how you spent your time for the first 10 years in your professional space, as to which was it that you put your foot into. I've shared it, but I'd like to hear it from you. As you started off your professional journey as a youngster, where did you put your foot first and began that beautiful journey? Wonderful. In 1987, January, I joined as a medical rep in a company called Full Ford India Limited, and I was based at Chennai that time. So after completing my chemistry graduation, I wanted to get into medical profession. When I say medical profession, as a medical rep. That was my goal. In the second year of my BSc chemistry, I have decided that I would like to be a medical rep. So 1987, I joined as a medical rep. And close to about 20 years, I was in pharma industry. The first 10 years, because you are asking specifically about first 10 years, I started as a med medical rep and then I became a territory manager and then I was promoted and I have become an area business manager. So that I will have to manage both the sales as well as uh, people. So I was based at Kerala. So therefore I had an exposure of moving out of Tamil Nadu, I went to Kerala. And after 10 years over, 
I was interested in product management team. So therefore, I was trying my best to get into PMT. I didn't get the opportunity from the same organization. Therefore, I had to go to another organization where the next, say, close to eight years, I was in product management throughout. And the last three years, I was managing both sales and marketing. So I was a general manager of sales and marketing for a pharma company. In 2007, I left and then I got into training and consulting. So the last, say, 15 years, I was in one company, which you mentioned about Mercury International. Today, I have a partnership firm, which is Sales Krita Consulting. So it's a boutique organization, which is focusing on sales training and sales consulting. The good things about uh, this particular organization is we don't only do a customized program. We also do very personalized program. Being a very small boutique organization, we would like to take care of all the individual's learning needs, just not a training needs, learning needs. We not only customize the program according to an organization, but we also personalize the program based on the individual. That is why when you introduce one-on-one -on -one coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching is applicable for both leadership team as well as for the team which is interested to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that is the broad base last 37 years. That is exactly what is a travel, right? From 1987 to 2024. Beautiful journey, sir. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. That's really very nice. Dear sir, we'd like to know more about this special thing called as a sales krita consultant. Consulting. Sure. As to what is it actually and how one could gain and benefit from this beautiful consulting. Yeah, as I said, it's a boutique organization. When you say boutique, it is very specialized in only one area of uh, training and consulting. So sales training and sales consulting. If you look at broadly, there are many businesses when it comes to sales. One is B2B business. So what is B2B business? Business to business is the is the, that's a function. For example, if you are manufacturing automobile, you don't manufacture tires. So what do you do? You buy tires from another company which is manufacturing. Therefore, a company which is manufacturing tire, selling that tire to an automotive sector, that is called B2B, business to business. In business to business, you buy a product and you, you don't use that as an end product. You use that product for some other purpose and then you produce another product. Therefore, this is B2B. Therefore, any sales organization which is into B2B business, we are there to help them in terms of training them and consulting them. This is one. Second business is B2C. So what is B2C? Business to consumer directly. If I'm buying, say, Lakme powder or Lakme or Pons powder, or if I buy Colgate toothpaste, if I buy Pepsodan, this is manufacturers directly selling to the consumers. And there is a method to sell that. The product will go from there to the distributor. It will go to the retailer. And then we as consumers, we go and buy. Therefore, it is this is B2C. And here also the training is required. Therefore, B2C, sales training and consulting. This is the second area. The third area is, this is my forte, is pharma industry. Wherein in pharma industry, it is not, not coming under B2B, it is not coming under B2C. It is uh, coming through B2D2C. So otherwise, we can say a business has to be communicated to the doctor and doctor in turn will be an influencer who will be recommending me to take a medicine and then I will go and buy it. So doctors don't buy, but the medical shops will buy. Therefore, it is actually a parallel. We go and talk to the doctor. We'll recommend or we'll request the doctors to recommend our product. And thereby, the doctor will make a prescription. The prescription will go to the retailers. And the retailers, by the time, we also go and communicate to the retailers, go and buy my product. The stockers will deliver the product. Therefore, in pharma, it is having a combination of both. I should go and influence influencers at the same time, go and... Uh, request the retailers to keep my stocks. Therefore, that's the way where the sales happen. Therefore, if a company is into pharmaceutical industry and they wanted to have a training, we can do that sales training as, as well as sales consulting. The fourth one, which is very specific, is B2, B, B2D2C, which is nothing but managing the dealers. There are some organizations where they only manage the dealers. You manufacture a product. For example, if you're manufacturing tiles, 
the tires will go to the dealers and dealers in turn will sell to the consumers. So therefore, if you look at it in getting a business, there are multiple business models. All these, call, these are called business models. So therefore, these business models, we can help. Sales Krita can help them in terms of getting that business through these, these channels. So we train people in the front line, middle managers, senior managers, and also the leadership team who are falling under this, this sales organization, maybe B2B, B2C, or B2DTC, or B2B. B to D. That, that's the way by which uh, we work on. Excellent. I also would like to give you a origin of this particular word. Sanskrita is a combination of uh, English and Sanskrit word. So I wanted to uh, have an Indianized word to this particular organization. My uh, entire family was involved in naming this. I should also give a credit to my daughter, my son, and also my wife. My wife is a uh, director of this organization, by the way. So therefore, we have coined this name with English and Sanskrit as a combination. So what is Krita? Krita in Sanskrit is going towards perfection. So you being in sales, you are moving towards perfection. I can't say I'm perfect in sales. I can't say that I'm perfect in any, organ any job, but I can move towards perfection. Therefore, this word Krita is aptly suitable to sales and therefore sales krita. Later on, out of curiosity, as I said, I would like to learn, out of curiosity, I also try to Google what does krita mean. I'm sure you must be knowing, being an Indian, you must be knowing krita, krita yuga was there many, 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 many centuries back. There was something called krita yuga. The krita yuga was considered to be a perfect yuga. Today we are in kali yuga. We are not in perfect world, but those years, krita yuga was there perfect world. Therefore, this is another meaning. And for this, it is also having a meaning in Bengali and Kannada. Similar meaning, going towards perfection. It is also having a meaning in Swedish language. So what is Swedish? In Swedish language, this means to draw. That means nothing is there, you can draw your own picture. So that is the meaning of Krita. So initially what we thought as a simple combination of English and Sanskrit word, no, it is not. It is having so much of meaning in it. Therefore, we thought, okay, we'll keep this as sales to the consulting. So this is based in Mumbai and we can cover global customers as well as in Indian customers. Those who are falling under B2B, B2C, and then business through the dealers or business to the doctors. Excellent, sir. I really I should appreciate you the way you shared that so clearly. You've given a clear concept as to what all is about sales data and how it takes people forward with regard to sales and how to understand the business world, how it works and how to enhance your business skills. That's really very nice. And even I didn't have much of information. I just had partial information. Thank you for sharing and enlightening, enlightening us. Sir. That's really beautiful. Sure. Yes, sir, I'd like to know, as a young boy below the age of 10, did you have all these thoughts at that time, like I should become somebody connected with sales or what were those thoughts as a youngster like what you wanted to become as a young boy because below the age of time too sometimes we see a policeman or a doctor and then we start imagining that you know see you see yourself in that place so who did you see as your role model when you were a young boy below the age of 10 if you could recollect anything like that okay below the age of 10 i would like to be playful that's it i want to be enjoying the life being playful and then whatever that is coming to, I would like to study and read. That's it. Nothing beyond that. Oh, below the age of 10. Nice. But below the age of 20, I can tell you. <laughs> yes, I will ask you that too. Yes. Uh, As yeah. you said, you are very playful and, you know, enjoying life below the age of 10, like all children do. What uh, type of incidents you are still fresh in your mind or what do you still remember? Like any incident that you remember that was very, um, you know, Maybe it was a dangerous incident or a comedy one filled with humor or maybe you were the naughty child in the class, something like that. No, in the third standard, I, uh, that I remember, in the third standard. By the way, I have not studied fourth standard because I got double promotion. So third to fifth, I went to. But third standard, I still remember there was one very um, inspiring teacher. Her name is uh, Usha. Uh, she inspired me to do well, especially in mathematics. So did I do mathematics very well a little later? Uh, that is not so. But during that time in the third standard, I did very, very well. And that's a time where 
uh, my father wanted to change the school. So when I went to the new school, that that time they gave a test to me on mathematics. I did a very good uh, job in terms of uh, scoring a good mark in mathematics because of this Usha teacher. And the fifth standard principal, she said, uh, I think you better join fifth, I mean, uh, this the teacher in the next school, she said, you better join in the fifth standard, not the fourth standard, because your mathematics is very good. That's the way by which, uh, uh, I, this is what one thing I remember. Later on, I wanted to meet uh, that madam, Usha madam. I could not really meet. I could not even search. Even on social media, I could not really search. So therefore, but still, uh, the memories about uh, our inspirational uh, way of teaching mathematics was still there in my mind. Yes. I guess you've learned a lot from Usha ma'am. And I'm sure you've in, taken up a lot of important points from her because now you're a trainer yourself. And you're giving your expertise to others. I guess I, oh, people may be remembering you too or will remember you too or are doing that job right now of uh, keeping you in that space that this person is a great trainer or this person is a great mentor. As you remember her, people will remember and are remembering you as well at this very sure, moment sure. too. Yeah. So that's really nice. I, I would like you to share one incident with your parents as a youngster. Like below the age of 10, uh, like I wanted to know, did you ever get a scolding from your mom or dad? Were you a very good child, obedient one or the naughty one? No, no, I was not a good child. <laughs> but I never got a scolding But because my father and my mother used to be very calm and composed. And my father used to be a, uh, uh, he, he was, uh, he, for him, worship, work was a worship. Therefore, he always used to be there in the office. And then my exposure to the mother is... Uh, Still, that is still in uh, my memory. A uh, couple of times uh, in the late evening, I don't come up, come back to the house about seven o'clock or eight o'clock. So, why? Because we were involved in playing cricket. Of course, we don't go outside that street. The same street will be playing. So, therefore, once or twice, my mama will come and remind me, you have to come back. So, you have to study because tomorrow's exam and other things. Even those days where just before the day, of the examination, we used to play cricket till seven o'clock or eight o'clock. Otherwise, there is no scolding, nothing, because my parents are always very calm and composed, both my father as well as mother. So they never scold. In fact, my father had a principle of not to beat anybody. He never beat anybody. No, not even once. Yeah, at least I could think about it. <laughs> Excellent. And you're one lucky one, huh? That's really nice. <laughs> You're lucky. And of course, you're gifted. If that is the rule of a parent, not to, you know, physically harm the child or threaten the child physically and beat them. That's really nice. May I know, like, you being a parent, did you follow the same rule as your dad? 100%. 100%. Okay. Yeah, that's really nice. So, now we come down uh, to back to your professional space. Now, with regard to your profession, the present one, which you are into. What are the types of challenges that you face? What are the uh, type of you know, the problems you face or what are the types of things that people come to you and say, if not, it's yours. It may be your clients when they come to you and say, these are the challenges we faced. Can you share one or two of them, sir? So as I'm into training and consulting, there are many clients who will come and uh, first is share us. Uh, we would like to grow in our business, but we are not growing well. This is one common challenge. Of course, we have a method to understand what is a real challenge. So we will go a little deeper in terms of asking lots of questions to find out what is a real challenge. At broad level, if you look at it, one is we are not making good revenue. We are not having a good profitability. We could not retain good people. And at the same time, we, our attrition is very high. Sometimes we could not manage the team. So the leadership challenges usually will be uh, we could not achieve a profitable business. So these are the common challenges that always come. So therefore, what we do is that in our organization, we have what we call as a, initially we'll have a discovery call. We will go and try to understand uh, what their real problem is. And once we understand the real problem, we also cross check that with uh, the team, which is working in the marketplace. We also go along with the team and meet a couple of their client, clients and try to understand the real problem. So this is to more to understand from both perspective. Example, if I am the leader of a company, if I say my people are not doing their good job, and probably I'll have to go and find out uh, how good the 
the job has been done at the ground level. So therefore, we'll, we'll get the perspective of both. We can't squarely blame only the team because the team is also under a lot of pressure. They have so many customers demanding so much and the competition is there waiting. If they lose this business, the competition is there to ready to take, take the business. Therefore, it is just not a challenge from only the leadership side. It is also a challenge from the sales team. So therefore, that's the time where we pitch in and we try to pitch in to understand both their point of view. And once we have a both points of view, we will try to give a solution to them. So therefore, in getting a business, it's a teamwork, if you look at it. It's a teamwork of getting a business. Few parts I should do as a leader, few parts as a salesperson, the team has to do. If it's just not only one. So that's exactly the solution that we also provide. So we create lots of frameworks. As a sales Krita consulting, we create lots of framework. When you say framework, um, you just mentioned during the introduction, customer acquisition. Yeah, there is something called customer acquisition is one. Second is customer retention. So both are equally important. And third element is not only retain the customer, but also grow along with the customer. Therefore, there's a third one. Peter Drucker, Peter Drucker is a management guru. He was a professor of uh, Philip Kotler. He used to say in 1985, very interesting quote he has given, even today I remember, and it is relevant. The purpose of any business is to create a customer and keep a customer. And if you just apply that, even in today's world, it is applicable. If an organization has to survive, they can survive only when the customers are there. And we need to create new customers. We also should keep the existing customer. Now, going back to the framework which I talked about, so we will recommend to the team uh, the leaders that this is a challenge for your team. Therefore, you need to acquire with some strategy. And at the same time, you should have a strategy to retain the customer. And you also should have a strategy to grow the customer. Therefore, there are three strong areas. So we have created a new framework for that, which is called a trapezoid. It's actually a sales funnel trapezoid. So in fact, you must have probably come across a sales pipeline. Uh, somebody will talk about service pipeline, but we have clubbed both together called business pipeline. A business pipeline is important for me to sustain the business, acquire new business. So these are some of the challenges people come up with. And leadership challenge, one more thing is uh, the attrition is a big challenge is a very, very big challenge. Acquiring a new talent is another big challenge for the organization. Therefore, we will try to address that. Now, how do we address that is, principally, if you look at the broad aspect as to why people leave, broadly, there are three reasons why people leave an organization. For example, assume that you are having a capability which is so much, but the job expectation is very less. But you're having the capabilities is very high, but the job expectation is very low. You will get frustrated because you think that you can contribute more, but the job is not really demanding so much. Vice versa, the job, job expectation is very high. The demand of the job is very high, but my capability is very low. They also get frustrated. So therefore, what is the ideal combination? The ideal combination is my capability is X. My job expectation is also X. Then I will be in a position to enjoy the work. But in reality, what happens over a period of time, as a human being, all of us learn, all of, 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 as a human being, all of us learn. So over a period of time, we also try to learn many things. So therefore, my capability increases. When my capability increases, the job remains the same. So that's the time I will get once again the frustration and people will leave. And that's the reason why it is important for a leader to look at Improve the capability at the same time, improve the responsibility of the team. Therefore, a promotion is required at the right time. If you delay the promotion, it is actually denied for the individual. Therefore, he will leave. Therefore, attrition cannot be prevented. This is a very subtle combination. And this has to be experienced only over a period of time. You cannot get as a formula. Therefore, there is no, even when I'm training, I can't give as a formula. I can't do that. But you can certainly understand this is the dynamics that is happening during the attrition time. So therefore, just to sum it up, challenges are many from a client's point of view. And one of the biggest challenges is acquiring new customer. Second biggest challenge is retaining people. These are the two challenges. Excellent, sir. You've explained that very well. 
as you said, uh, customer acquisition, customer retention, and growing with the customer. You focused on these th three aspects. That's really wonderful. So there are people who work very well or give their very best when they are under pressure. Is it the same with you too? I try to do the work before the pressure comes. Wow, great. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. That's really Example, nice. Example, today's meeting interview, I prepared two days back. So I don't want to be under pressure during the last minute. How sweet. That's really nice. Sir. I mean, that's a beautiful message that you're giving us. You know, always prepare before the big day. Prepare, prepare before you face anything. So be prepared. So now we'll be really interested to know about your teenage years. Like how were you as a little teenager? From the age of 13 to 19. Okay, the first, uh, say, five years, you said 13 to 19. Therefore, I'm saying first year, five years, which is 13 to 18. I was completely misdirected. And I was not having any clue of what to do, how to do another things. Absolutely no clue. And neither I asked my parents, nor I asked my other friends. So Because it is a, a very clear teenager's thinking. Uh, to continue with what I did, 10 years i used to play cricket and then i don't study so much and i'm not a, a studious guy so till 18. but the moment i got into the college that's the time where i got a big um, blow to my mind there was one college mate of mine he when i was attempting to speak in uh, english he says don't speak in english it is rubbish the way that you're speaking english is rubbish it really wounded me on that day it is wounded, even today it has wounded me, but uh, the wound is not visible so much. But that wound made me to change my entire thinking. In fact, the first thought that came to my mind is I want to disprove him. My English is no more rubbish. I want to disprove him. I picked up one by one. I picked up one by one. I started reading books first. The first book that I read was um, Ayn Rand Atlas Shrugged. It's a book book. It is about 1,350 pages and with a font size of eight size. Therefore, the first book that I read was Ayn Rand at last track. Then I started continue to have the same habit of reading so many books. And I also do many other things. For example, I look at newspaper, a difficult word in the newspaper. I pick it up and write it in a separate diary, noting down, noting down the meaning of the particular new word and try to improve my vocabulary. That's the way by which I developed myself. So the third year of the college, when dumb sharers used to happen, so all the classmates said that, Rajiv, you should be a participant. So where, of course, English is really required there. You should be a participant. And the person who commented about me, my English being rubbish, he also said, no, Rajiv, only you should be doing that. Nobody else can do that. So I could make his comment, a very positive comment. Of course, I, would, I took it very, very seriously and uh, to the extent that I wanted to improve myself in English. And therefore, I visited many libraries. I went to American Library, British Council Library. My father used to always encourage me because whenever I go to any library like this, we have to pay some nominal fees. Uh, my father said, you will have to do that. Why don't you buy it? You go and be a, be a library member and you can start doing that. So he used to encourage me. So I go to the library, get some five to six books and come home and then study about, I don't read it. I can't study the book. I study the book, take notes out of the book. And then that's the way by which I practice. See, what used to be first five years, not so very healthy. But the 18th year onwards, I saw a meaning in life that I can dedicate myself. I started writing poems during that time. I write a lot of poems and then I started writing, writing a lot of articles small, small articles, used to be published in local magazines during those days. But most importantly, in the college magazine and other places, it used to be published. So therefore, that's a turning point. The 18th year is a very memorable year for me. Even today, I remember everything I remember. When I was going by cycle to the college, I used to have the crossword puzzle kept on my uh, book, which will be kept in front of me, because there used to be a stand in the front. So I used to keep that there. And then that's the way by which um, I practice. So on the way, I think about the crossword, clue, and then word. The moment the word comes to my mind, I stop the cycle, write the word, and then I move away. That's the way by which I was doing in the 80th year. 
that's really so nice of you to share all of that. Now, I just formed that visual picture or that created a mental picture of you uh, riding your bicycle and, you know, doing that work. That's really nice. Thank you for sharing all of those beautiful experiences. Sir. That's really nice. And your friend, I was to ask you if it was a male or a female one, but then finally you revealed that he... So I understand. Was it a co-education? Uh, no, no. It was not a co-education. It's a, a completely a boys one. Boys, yes. Yeah. That's really nice. So now uh, you've been giving your very best as a youngster, as a teenager. You began to write poems. You began to write and it got published in your school magazines, etc. Presently, you are an author as well of different books. And one of them is something connected with like let me get that selling. right. Like, hybrid, yeah. selling. hybrid selling decoded. What's yeah. all this about, sir? What is it all about? So this one I've written when uh, the uh, problem of um, COVID came in. During that time, I started writing this. In fact, my thought of writing a book was much earlier. But during this time, uh, I thought maybe it's a good idea to have a, a book which is uh, communicating to various people in terms of how to sell through virtual, how to sell to physical. So let me give a background to that. If you see before 2019 or 2020 March, before that, 100% a salesperson will go and meet the customer live. That means face to face, he will go and meet the customer. Only 5% used to have on telephone or probably uh, email communication. But otherwise, if you see all the salespeople will go to the customer and go and talk about their products and understand the need, that's what they will do. But during the COVID time, complete restrictions happened. Therefore, under person, it was only virtual. Either through the Teams or through the Zoom, we had a meeting or do the telephone or even an email. We never had a face-to-face -face meeting during that time. So they found a person. During the second wave, till the second wave, it was like that. And just after the second wave, a little better. And therefore, about 10, 5, 10 to 15% people started having a face-to-face -face meeting. The customer is also willing to give a meeting with you and 15% discussions happen face to face and 85% used to have a, a virtual meeting. Now, after 2024, if you look at it, now it's slightly different. Is 80% the customers are willing to have a face to face and 20% they still prefer to have the physical, I mean, a virtual meeting. So therefore, in the month of August, uh, in the month of uh, yeah, August 2020, I have decided why not I write a book which will be useful for a salesperson, whether it is a virtual meeting or a face-to-face -face meeting. And that is what is called hybrid, hybrid selling decoded. So whether it is a virtual meeting or the face-to-face -face meeting, this book will be useful. There are six chapters in this book. The first, first to five chapters are dedicated only to the customer. Customer is in the center. What is the customer's buying behavior? What is the customer's expectation? What are the customer's value that he is create, looking at? All those things are only related to the customer because customer is the focus. Peter Drucker told acquiring customer, retaining customer, and growing the customer is important. They have a customer. The first five are only customer. Then I have looked at how to decode. I have given 52 skills, 52 skills or process which one can follow during the hybrid selling, whether it is a virtual selling or face-to-face. -face. Now, why 52? You may be asking, why 52? We are having 52 weeks in a year. So one week, you practice one. You read only one page. Practice it, come back, and then read the second. Second week, you practice. Third week, you can practice. That means the entire book, you can keep it for a year, and then you can master it. And whenever you're reading anything, if you apply it immediately, it will be useful for you to uh, sharpen your own skills. That's the reason why I gave 52 tip tips. So that is the book all about. And this book is uh, full of pictures. When I say full of pictures, all those 52 weeks pictures are there. 52 pictures are there and every picture will denote something, some skill about it. For example, during the communication, giving a pause is important. For example, just now I gave a pause. So when to give a pause? What should be the time period for a pause? Why pause is relevant? Why pause is required? What are the advantages of giving a pause? Therefore, that will be there. 
In the virtual medium also you can give a pause. In the face-to-face -face also I can give a pause. Therefore, every 52 skill will have a picture and then every 52 will have a related to the story or the skill. And all these pictures are drawn by my daughter. And therefore, I can't say only I wrote this book. So my daughter also is a participant in that particular book writing. And of course, I dedicate that book to my family. My first to my parents, as well as those who helped me, my wife, my... I have a pet also. I have a dog. So he also has helped me and my son and my daughter. Of course. Beautiful, beautiful, sir. That's really very, very interesting. Thank you for, uh, you know, decoding that for us. You know, then I understood what is this hybrid I was thinking. And so you made it very clear. That's really nice. Thank you so much. And thanks to your daughter for being a part of that beautiful, you know, celebrating that book in a beautiful way of being a part of it, as you mentioned, uh, the drawings, etc. And thank you for allowing, letting me know that there are 52 weeks in a year. Till now, I was just clueless about it. So that's a big takeaway for me. Yes, that's really nice. And I think many of our friends too would be like me. Like we'll not be having that thought that, yeah, there are 52 weeks in a year. So we'd like to know about how you want to want people to remember you. And in what way should they remember Dr. Rajiva? I want them to remember as a person who will them. That's it. Nothing beyond that. Even if they don't remember, it's okay. As long as the learning that they got from me is useful to them. So therefore, they need to just uh, have that gratitude. That's it. Nothing beyond that. And I would like to have a gratitude for my teachers, my gurus, my seniors. Even today, I keep in touch with my first boss. I used to keep in touch with my teachers. Therefore, that's, that's one thing. I don't want anything else. They should be benefited by the learning that they got from us. That's it. So I have a question now. That friend of yours, long time back, who ridiculed you, is he still there? You're connected with him? Is he still in your life? Are you connected? He's still him? there. He's in Lucknow. He's working for a company as a director. <laughs> yeah, he's still there. <laughs> I mean, we all I'm in touch with talking. him. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. That's we beautiful. become very close friends now. Wow, that's nice. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. So there are other books that you've also written. If you'd like to share uh, your thoughts on those books quickly, which you have written. It's not one you have written, like more than one. If you'd like to share your thoughts on that. As I if you look at it, I've written right now only one. But I have another two books, which is on the way now. So one is on uh, negotiation skills. Second is on training. These are the two books that I'm now writing. It should come anytime. So I'm just looking forward to yeah, good publishers now. Yeah. When do you get the time to write? It's just the best part of the day that you feel feel like putting your thoughts on paper. Uh, there's one habit that I cultivated right from the beginning, maybe from the 18th year onwards, which I told you, you know, I do take I do study the book and then take notes, and that I continue even today. So any new thought that is coming to my mind, I just put it into that. So I have a big book. And the, the, there's a red book, which we call us. I have a red book. I can also show you the red book in Please front of me right now. Yes. Uh, just this is a red book. This is a red book. This red book has got a multiple pages. So but what I will do, I will segregate this uh, book into five to six compartments of different topics. The topics of my interest. Example, one topic is uh, selling is one topic, which is close to my heart because that is the profession that I'm in. Second is negotiation is a second topic. Third topic is leadership. Is the third topic. Fourth topic is uh, newer ideas. Anything that is happening in the world, anything that is changing in the world, in the business world or any other world, I have that. Fourth one is, I mean, the fifth one is uh, how to use these ideas in my profession. Therefore, what I will do, anything that is read by me, a new book or any new things, I come back and then write it down in the way that I wanted to communicate. Therefore, I write it down, I capture it in this. If, therefore, you'll find that page one to page 30, it is allotted for selling or sales. Maybe I've written only three or four pages. I will keep the other balance empty. Till I read the second book, I'll come back and write it down. Therefore, that's the way by which I take notes. Therefore, this is one habit that I'm having. 
whenever i write a new book i go and go back and look at it so what was covered earlier how it has been written and all those things i look at it my favorite time to write is uh, late evening when i say late evening after 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock that's the way by which i start writing so nowadays the timing has changed now i'm getting up a little early i'm getting up by 6 o'clock and therefore i prefer to do during that 6 to 8 but the earlier days it used to be late night and i mean my preferred time to read is about 4 o'clock in the evening i love that 4 to 6 in the evening i really love to read when i'm not having any other work if i'm having a work i i cannot do that but otherwise uh, saturday sundays i read, uh, read some books it is not consistent though but relevant to the topic if i am having a interest on one topic i complete that and then take notes and that's the way by which i do that yes thank you sir for sharing but i have a question again now after seeing your red book it's really a lovely big book from where did you get it did someone <laughs> give it to you or did you buy it sir no 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 i buy that these books i buy because this is something which is uh, important for me early days i used to have a small diary i never used to buy a big book like this at one point of time i thought let me buy a big book and uh, so all that i was having the last say 32 years of my learning is there in this book whatever that i have learned small bits and pieces it is not a big thing small small things which i have learned it is there in this for example, I read in 1989, I read one concept. Even today it is there in this book. That time um, somebody has written feeling inferior and thinking inferior. There's a difference in these two terminologies. So what is thinking inferior? If I'm not in a position to do something, if I think inferior, in my mind I'll say I can do other things, but this one I can't do. Therefore, I can improve. Whereas when I feel inferior, I can't do this as well as I can't do this. That means I will not really be oriented to better off or better myself. So therefore, do not feel inferior, but think inferior. Thinking inferior is always good for us to develop. Feeling inferior is make us to get agitated, get frustrated, and therefore will become very uh, anxious and then we'll be depressed. This concept I read in 1989, and that was written in that old, old diary, which I copied it here. In this. So whenever I make a, get a new book, if this is completely exhausted, then I'll have to buy another book. Right now, this is, under, this is about 1,000 page book, this one, 1,000 page book. And once this is completed, then I'll have to buy a new book. It is available in Mumbai, anyway. I can go and get. I asked you because I wanted to lay my hands on one of them. Yes, that's really nice. And if I hope it's available everywhere online. Did you buy it, sir? Or did no, you no, no, offline, offline. Yes. yes, that's really nice to have all in one. You know, it's very impressive. I would like you to show it to all our audience once more, like such a huge one, please. This is the book, red book. And then you can see the topic. Oh, well, this is sales catalog. I'll just show you the. Like this. I write uh, one. I'll just show you the first is content. Yeah, now you can see in this left side, you can see so you will find the indexing here. Indexing is on sales, on negotiation, on sales management, on strategy and top management, on customer service, on industries, on training, on organization, new designs on programs, and also ideas for 2024. These are the various. Uh, indexing which i have done so with various pages very impressive sir very impressive uh -huh. excellent that's really nice and uh, i thank you very much for sharing that because there are many people like you like me and you know there are people like us who would like to you know do this work very meticulously like write down jot down all the points and keep it yes sir very impressive so now we come down a little away from your professional space we'd like to know about your the way you entertain yourself and you spend time during your leisure, uh, you know, when you get some leisure. Do you ever go for movies? And if yes, which is your favorite one? I go to movies. In fact, earlier days, I used to go for many movies. And nowadays, um, 
I'm not so oriented towards going to a movie because Netflix and Prime has come. If rather I sit there. Any new movie from Tamil or from Telugu, I see on the day one. Usually. But now the interest has come down. The interest is no more towards uh, traveling, especially traveling towards the pilgrimage. I, I and my wife both will go to many temples and we love that. So therefore, that is the Elisha today. And whenever I am at home and I don't have any other work, I do meditation or pranayama. And then I will also read a lot of books and then write books. Yes, sir. No specific favorite actor. Mm -hmm. Rajanikanth, yes, I do like him because of his uh, uh, style and other way. But everybody has got their own strengths, I, I would say. Every actor has got their own strengths. Yes, dear sir. Thank you so very much. I just was to ask you this question. You being in Mumbai, were you able to see any of the Bollywood actors and actresses? Did you get a chance ever to have a glimpse of them? No, no, no. <laughs> I, had a, I had a glance. I had a fortune to meet two members, two great individuals. One is Ratan Tata. And then second one is uh, Mr. Mukesh Ambani. I could I could meet them. At least I could speak to Mr. Ratan Tata. Uh, I could see Mr. Mukesh Amar. You're lucky. You're really lucky. Yeah, very lucky. Absolutely. He is a down-to-earth person and noble. Nobility is very high. He's a wealth creator. His humility is very high. His value system is so great. So Mr. Ratan Tata is a fabulous individual. If I used to hear this, I have not seen that way. Whenever any person goes and meets him, he used to sit in the first or second floor. He comes all the way to the elevator and sends them off and then only goes back. Irrespective of the time. Any person, any visitor goes and meets him when they are sending when he's sending them off. He comes to the elevator, presses the button, and then he says goodbye. That's the way it is. Yes, that's really very nice. Thank you for sharing, sir. Now, we would like to know one important thing. What is it that you love about Raji? What do you love about yourself? I'm a family man. I love that. <laughs> I wish to be with my family. And wherever we go, we would like to go together. That's what I really love. Wonderful answer. And I wish every individual gives this answer. And if everyone values their family as much as you do, it would be a beautiful world, sir. Dear sir, that's really very nice. Sir, do you believe in lotteries as well? No, no, not at all. How many of your friends have been with you through thick and thin? With, with you, Jim? Through thick and thin, to ups and downs. There are many friends. There are many, many friends. Um, noticeably, five to six friends are there that way. Ups and downs, they are there always. Ups and downs. They, uh, they take part in both uh, sorrows as well as happiness. But there are many well-wishers are there. I should say that. There are many well-wishers, even though I restricted only five to six. Even those people whom I worked in 1986, even today they are great friends. They wish us very well. Maybe sometimes what happens is we would not express our sorrow to them. Therefore, they are not a part of us. But always they wish us very well. Even today in with whom we have worked, I have worked in 1986. I am there in, in a group. We are about say 20-25 people. We are still there intact. So every ups and downs, they know it. And any joyful moment, they appreciate. They can, they really wish. Therefore, they are they are there. Uh, maybe if I if they are not part of my sorrows, it may be not because of them. It is because maybe I have not shared it with them. It is my mistake, not theirs. But there are so many people who are always as friends. Anything that happens, they are there. Yes. Even if I'm away from Chennai, even though I'm originally from Chennai, they're still there. They call away, they can a flight away, they can come. 
it's not an issue at all. <laughs> so maybe I'm lucky in that, that I'm lucky. Excellent, sir. That's really nice. Thank you for sharing, sir. So, as you mentioned earlier that you were interested in cricket and used to play a lot of cricket during your earlier days as a youngster, do you still have any interest in sports and games still now, till date? I am definitely interested in cricket. Maybe I'm not playing, but I'm definitely interested in cricket. I watch uh, lawn tennis very well, but I look at the cricket a little differently. I don't see for the sake of a match, I don't see who is a winner, who is a loser. I look at the processes, how they are bowling, how they are batting, how they are setting the field. Therefore, I try to under understand from that angle, strategy angle, I would like to look at it. If I, one of the interesting learning that I got, this is happening in South Africa, I think. Uh, Rahul Dravid, great, great cricketer, the first innings he got out. I think he got out for zero or something. He didn't go inside the pavilion. He went out of the crease. He moved outside the boundary and he was sitting there in a chair. And he was observing how the ball is being pitched. Now, the South Africans, they are bowlers, they are bowling. And every two, three hour, hours, they are getting on additional wickets. So, Raghul Dravid was carefully observing what's really happening, what's really happening in the pitch. And he found out the real thing that is happening in the pitch. And then for second innings, he came and he scored double century. So when somebody went and asked, uh, Raghul Dravid, how is that you could manage double century when you have scored only duck in the first innings? Uh, that is the time he revealed He revealed it. No, I was observing how the bowlers are bowling and I could see that the ball is, once it is pitched, sometimes the dust is not thrown out. Sometimes the dust, dust is coming out, sometimes the dust is not thrown out. So then I understood that some parts of the day the pitch is wet, some parts of the day the pitch is dry. And whenever it is wet, the spinners will get a better spin. Whenever it is dry, the, the pace bowlers will have a better pace. So if accordingly I understood, then I also observed that whether the dust is coming or not coming, and therefore based on that I play. It is a fabulous observation. If that's the real impressive way of uh, uh, looking at cricket, in fact, I learned this from not only Rahul Ravi, even Sachin also does that. He also does uh, lots of uh, observation about the field and fleet placement and how the pitch is there. So that's the time I thought I should also see cricket a little differently. Not just for the sake of looking at who is a winner, who is a loser. And look at cricket differently. Therefore, I also look at strategically uh, what is the field placement, how they are placing, what is the bowler, how he is pitching, where he is pitching, all those things. If even today I look at it, in fact, I know a person, uh, his name is Wasson. Uh, he, he is from 1986 uh, onwards. He's a great analyzer of cricket. Even today, maybe in 2024 also, if you go and ask him, uh, in 1992, what has happened between West Indies and India, he will say exactly. <laughs> He's got such a powerful memory. Okay, And... Um, I have learned from him also how to analyze, how to look at the game a little differently. Therefore, cricket is one thing which is very close. Of course, I don't have time to really watch as much. But whenever I'm watching, I'm only watching this. Not playing because I don't have any person around me to play. A lawn tennis, yes, I used to watch lawn tennis. Yes, sir. I'd like to know your thoughts and feelings with regard to India losing against Australia in the World Cup and as well as the under-19. Recently, they had that under-19. India again was pitched against Australia and there too, India lost. How did you feel and what are your thoughts with regard to that? So my feeling is I felt bad because India has played so well in the World Cup and they have, they were unbeatable right from the match one. They, they were very, very good. They were in a good form. I think it is quite unfortunate on that day, it was not a day for India. And even though they are put in their best, psychologically, there could have been pro probably some uh, fear with them that it has really put them away from playing a good cricket on that day. But they played well. Maybe Australia played much better. Here, I should appreciate Australia there, because that's what I said. This is not a winning or losing. I should appreciate Australia. Australia, in fact, they, they lost the first match with India in that particular World Cup. They lost it. But their temperament was so strong that when they came to final, 
they acted as if they, they are the winners right from the day one uh, the, the the first of all they behave like they walk like they they played like a winner right from the beginning they thought that way in fact they were having a very strong mind on that day maybe that could be the reasons to why they have really clinched the trophy i think similarly even for 119 too so they played well but unfortunately the last game it has gone out of us. Yes, dear sir. Dear sir, what kind of a change you would love to see in this world? What kind of change I would like to see? Maybe our human interaction can be better. Because of missions of coming, before the minutes and time that we are spending with the friends and family, the time in terms of... Uh, Digital world is much more dominant than physical world. You can spend more time face to face, have a cup of tea, we can do that. I think that is coming down. I think by 2050, if you ask me, missions will probably be ruling us more than the mind. So human touch is important because being a human being, when we start depending on the missions and digital, it is going to take us no way. Because the real truth of a human being is lost. Because only human being can have a, a self-realization. Nobody else. And when we are depending more on digital world and other things, we can't do that. So therefore, we need to explore our humanity more than anything else. Yes, dear sir. Thank you for focusing on this beautiful aspect, human interactions and upholding the main essence of being human. Humanity uh, is, you know, the highest thing that we have to concentrate on. Yes, sir. Dear sir, there are many people at your age who have given up and are just sitting down doing nothing. You are a person, till date, you're contributing your thoughts, your expertise and energies in a very positive way. You would want to upgrade the skills of the younger generation and bring about beautiful balance in the lives of people. Now, I'd like you to just share with me, Did you do you have any plans for retirement as well? Yeah, this is it that I'm going to relax after five years or maybe 10 years and just take a break and only enjoy life. There is no retirement for learner, isn't it? So I would like to learn as, as much as possible because what I know is very less, what I don't know so much. But certainly... Having started my own organization, which is Sales Krita Consulting, which is CEO, I try to find time for um, many things, including for personal likes and dislikes, personal family too. I am trying to find out a lot of time now, balancing both. So therefore, I don't see there is no fixed date for that retirement. So therefore, I would like to continue to learn. Enjoy right. going to various places, pilgrimages. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I really like, like this, sir. You said like a learner has you know, you know, no retirement for a good learner. So that's really nice. So the next uh, question coming up is like, uh, you've been sharing so much of time with different people with regard to sales as a trainer. And in the, you know, you're even, you even guided MBA students and... Um, all of those so now what i want to know is like what is it that makes you give so much than get back that mentoring students you completed your phd you gave guidance and mentorship to others with regard to their projects etc so what is it that gives you that push to do a little more go that extra mile okay i'll take an incidence of training as such so, okay, we'll come to the MBA student a little later. If you look at the training. So when I'm doing a training program, the training is all about uh, giving skills to them or learning or teaching them on skills and little of process. But there are many salespeople during the second training, they will come and say, last year training, I have learned this and I've applied it and I got a business deal cracked. So when they are successful, we feel very good. 
it is not that they should get a business deal done for them. Even when they say that this changed my life, we feel good about it. There's one person uh, who is working as a COO. Uh, she she was a person who was responsible for uh, you know, guiding people to get business. That organization, after reading my book, uh, in my book, I have written something called 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 7 is equal to result. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 7 is equal to result. Therefore, I have tried to give a formula for result. So what is this uh, 1? 1 is um, understand at least one need or one pain areas of a customer. What is 2? Two? 2 is uh, at least give at least meet two decision makers in the customer's place. What is three? At least give three options as a solution to the customer. What is seven? At least meet seven types. According to the uh, research, they say it is seven times you need to meet a new customer to get an order. Seven times you meet a customer to get an order. This will change from B2B to B2C to B2 uh, through the pharmaceutical. It will change. But Average, that's what they say. Research also says that 95% of the time, salesperson meets the customer six times and then he will delete the customer. One more time, if he meets or she meets, he will get the order. Therefore, this 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 7 is equal to result. The moment I have released this book and she bought it, and the moment she bought it, if she first went through the book, she implemented this particular idea in the market. And she got the success and she immediately gave a call to me, Rajiv, I have done this and I got this order. I felt good. That means it may be a small thing. That small thing is triggering somebody and make them to apply and therefore they are successful. That gives a solace to us. Therefore, I'm not really talking about giving or getting nothing. Maybe because of me doing something, they got benefit. However small it is, the benefit has been the same things applicable to even to an MBA student. MBA student, because of my teaching, because of that, if he is getting a better score, he feels very good. And he's also having a better clarity. So when the better clarity, better scores, better results have come, we feel good about it. So that's exactly. And of course, I, I also constantly learn. Any new thing that is coming, I'll update to them. If a one organization, they are talking about, um, I want to know the culture. This is actually a company which is into um, uh, CEO levels placements. That is CXO level placements. Okay. It means the person who is a business development manager should be good enough to talk to the CEO levels. Or in fact, they're supposed to talk to the board level. So she was asking me one of the review meetings. She was asking me, I really don't know how to understand the culture of the organization to go and talk to the board of directors. Then what I've done is I came back and then I did a lot of research and then I've sent some 15 to 20 articles only on how to understand the culture of an organization. I, I looked at the gist of it and then I prepared a small summary. I sent a mail of the 15 attachments at the same time, the summary. After one week, she gave a call to me and said, Rajiv, the summary as well as the 15 articles was so useful to me. I was in a position to talk to the board of directors at the cultural level and not just at the transaction level. This gave me a good feeling. That's it. It is that good feeling is what is driving me to help the individuals as well as the organization. Excellent, sir. Beautiful, beautiful, sir. Thank you very much for sharing. That's really nice. So I'm sure the MBA students and as well as the farmer students who you uh, connect with uh, will definitely gain a lot. Thank you very much. Dear sir, now this whole process on the professional front, what does it really require? Does it require hard work or smart work or both? I think it's a combination of both because we are in digital world today. We should not reinvent what is already there. So whatever already there, try to understand what is there. Is it useful to me today? Do that. If it is not useful to me, create a new one. Or if there is any gap identified, block it. I think it's a combination of both. Hard work, always space. But wherever already people have created it, why should I reinvent it? Instead, focus on something new. So, 
what is the message that you'd like to give all the youngsters who would want to be the next Dr. Rajiv? Who would want to be in your shoes? What is the uh, suggestion for them? Be a good learner. Be a good human being. That's it. <laughs> And a good family person too. As you mentioned, I really yeah. appreciate the way you shared that. You know, I love being a family person, taking care of my family. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that. <laughs> yes, sir. Dear sir, now we come down to something very personal. What makes you smile? When do you often smile? Or what brings a beautiful smile on your face? That's what many people used to ask me. So, smile comes, uh, I think, naturally. To, to me, what makes me smile? Uh, what, uh, maybe I can say this. I feel very joyful when I'm talking to somebody. Even if I am not, I assume there is a joy within me which will make me to really smile. Because from every individual, we can learn something. So therefore, the joy automatically comes. We can learn something out of that. Uh, there is no other secret as such. Yes, sir. Thank you for sharing. So now we all face ups and downs and sometimes in the morning when we get up, everything is fine. There are no ups and downs. Everything is very normal. Everything is okay. You know, we are not have too happy or too uh, sad or nothing like that. But still we don't feel like doing work on that particular day. Something is holding us back. Some unknown thing is holding us back. We cannot figure it out as to what it is. But when you look around, everything's okay. There's nothing disturbing. But still, there's something deep within you that says something's not okay and you don't know what it is. But still, you face life. You get up and, you know, go around with all your activities regularly. So where do you get that strength to fight back that feeling? I don't know if you have ever faced that feeling. I do face it and many of us have faced it. That everything's fine, but still then when you get up early in the morning, you don't want to face the day. There's something unknown troubling you. So if you have faced this, how do you overcome the uh, this situation? And from where do you get the strength to face the day? Even even I also face the same thing. Uh, not, not that always you know, we are enthused to do certain things or sad to be very quiet. I also face that. I think we have to allow it to settle down. We should not disturb it. Let the feeling be there as it is. So that's what I do. I'll just let it go. So if I don't want to do anything, okay, let me not do anything. I simply want to scroll the paper. I will not read the paper. I'll just scroll it. I'll just scroll it. I'll just scroll the television channel. I'll just scroll that without any purpose. It goes on. But suddenly what happens is, this is what has happened to me. Suddenly what happened is, this work you have not done, Raji, you should do it. It comes. For example, we prepare proposals for the customers. We prepare the program design for the customer. Sometimes I read uh, and take notes and then, so suddenly something will come. Rajiv, this is what you should do. You have not done it. So then what has happened is um, all those feeling of uh, being dull, not to do anything will go away. And this comes. If that feeling is not going away, I will just be as it is. Entire lunch, uh, day, I will be like it. But the next day that vigor will come to complete all the work. I think allowing it to do, because sometimes what happens, we being an emotional being, we will have this ups and downs, we will have it. I let it go as it is. But only thing is, we should have so many activities with us. I should not be depressed because of that. I should not be depressed because of it. Engage yourself. When you are engaging yourself, you will really overcome certain things. That's what I would like to say that. Yes, sir. thank yes, you, sir. sir, for sharing that. Thank you very much. So let that feeling sink in and you go through that process. You know, don't try to exactly. crash with it or bounce back. So just go with the flow. You'll be all right very soon. Not to be forcing ourselves. Go with the flow is the right word, maybe. Thank you for that. Go with the flow. Don't force yourself. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dear sir, now, as you were just sharing, a thought came in my mind. I recollected something. The best salesperson is able to sell sand on a seashore something if i've read that right so i would like to share this uh 
I I think it is true. In fact, maybe another example could be is a comb to a person who is bald. Okay. So therefore, if you look at it, a person who is very innovative, he can think of multiple application of the same comb. You don't have to use a comb only for no, combing your hair. You can also use a comb for scratching. You can also use a comb for uh, uh, drawing a line. So therefore, you can use uh, for multiple. Even for a drawing a particular design, you need to have a comb, which we can do that. For example, take a paint and dip it in. There is a question of how do you create a new need in the customer's mind? And making the customer accept oh, that's a new need for me. And then give him. Therefore, we, because today, the world is not linear. Example, this pen need not be useful only to write. This pen can be used for multiple purposes. Therefore, first find out what are the various applications of this pen. Even to pierce somebody, this pen is useful. Isn't it? And create a hole in the paper is also this pen is useful. Therefore, try to understand as many applications of this pen. And therefore, you talk when we are talking to the other person. It is not only for you to write down this pen. There are multiple applications available with this pen. You can you can take that. Therefore, how do you create a need in the other person's mind for buying this pen is equally important. And the moment and there are so many successful salespeople are like that. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing the example of a comb and a pen as well. That's really nice. Dear sir, we'd like to know if Dr. Rajiv has any weakness too. Any? Weakness. Weakness. Yes, I do have. I'm very inconsistent in certain exercises. Sometimes I always plan to do. For example, I do yoga and meditation and walking and other things. Certain times what happens is it is having an interruption. So I could not really proceed further. And that is one inconsistency I want to break. At least for one or two things. Not for everything, but one or two things I would like to break. it. That's a big weakness which I would like to overcome. I'm trying to. I'm learning to overcome that. Yes, sir. Dear sir, you come across as a very calm, a very, you know, uh, collected person. I mean, like your thoughts are all collected. You know what you are, uh, you're very humble, you're very polite. You appear to be on the calmer side. Do you ever get angry too? Yeah, I do. When it is required, when? yes. When? <laughs> when? No, when it is required, yes. But what uh, what lots... angers you, may, if I could ask it in this way, what angers you? I'll shout. Example, if somebody is uh, not understanding, I I'll give you an example. I'm I have taken my dog for a walk recently. So when we, in, in our family and entire members, when we take our dog for a walk, we also carry a paper where in case if the, the dog is uh, dropping the uh, potty, we will collect it and then we'll come and throw it in the dustbin somewhere. And there's one person who was just, uh, without looking at what I've been doing, I'm just taking my dog and he started blaming that the dog is uh, dropping the potties there. I asked him, why do you say that? Did you see that he is doing it? So he was not ready to even listen to it. That's the time I got angry. I said, if you are saying something which has not been done by my dog, why are you saying that? Unless until you have a proof. You have proof, then I will accept it. And there cannot be any proof because he has not done it. So therefore, don't simply put a blame on somebody who has not done anything without even having an uh, iota of knowledge. So therefore, that's the time I get angry. <laughs> I get angry, of course. Um, but otherwise, I prefer to be calm. But it is not that I will be always calm. I can get calm. Yes, thank you for sharing that beautiful experience. Uh, because yes, uh, people without knowing the truth, and if they accuse us, and definitely then you know, we really feel that we cannot be calm. We have to give back to them left and right, maybe. And then we lose our temper. Very true. And uh, protecting your dog as you treat your dog as a family member, as you in initially mentioned. So, exactly. yes. Yeah. So, when you know your dog's name, what's the name of your Rambo. dog? Rambo. Rambo. Is he around yeah. you? He's here in the next room, yeah. He's sleeping now. Sleeping. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, he's a lucky one to have you as his ma master and pet parent, you know. You're a pet. But it is the other way. Vice versa. We are lucky to have him. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so, sweet. That's really nice. Dear sir, is there anything that scares you too? Any any fears? No, nothing. No fear as such. 
sometimes fear of unknown <laughs> what is not known to us <laughs> yes that's very true fear of the unknown so uh, your favorite color as you showed me your red diary why did you select red is red your favorite color or some other color oh see uh, in fact uh, earlier days i used to have yellow as a favorite color no i felt there is nothing called favorite whichever is pleasant i think it is good color but the yes good pastel color i like it usually a little softer one pastel color especially they say in english color a english pastel color i like it it can be any color but i like those colors yes have you been visiting other countries too with regard to your profession or just on a holiday yeah yeah I have almost done for 20 different countries. I have done training. I have done training on... 20 yeah. different countries, sir? Yeah. So, 20 different countries I have done training for the their locals. I mean, gone to their country personally and you have... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Would you like to mention a few of them? If it is 20, at least give us five countries. Example, Poland is one which I have done. Germany is one I have done. France is one, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Sweden. These are the countries that I have trained people there. The, the good news, I would say, maybe it, it's a good thing. One of the countries I was asking them, so why have you chosen an Indian to be trainer here? So because that, that team has become a little closer. So what they said is, um, we are... Basically, we speak here French or we speak here German, but we don't have a good English speaking trainer. But if the audience is English speaking, we want to have a good English speaking trainer. So we have four choices. Choice one is we can call an American trainer. Choice two is we can call an English trainer. Choice three is we can call an Indian trainer. Choice four is we can call an Australian trainer. So whereas we always prefer Indian trainer because they are better. As why? Why do you say that we are better? They're better because of uh, two things. One is Indian trainers are very committed. For example, if 5 o'clock the training is getting over, Indian trainers will not say, 5, I'm getting out. Over. The training is over. Indian trainers will not say that. But all other three countries will say, you know, 5 o'clock. So 4.59 they are ready to go out. But Indian trainers, they, they don't. And second one is Indian trainers are very intelligent. And even if they are not uh, knowing the answer, the next day they come back with an answer. So therefore, we always feel that they are having commitment. At the same time, they're also having a little flexibility in terms of you know, helping us. That's the reason why we prefer an Indian trainer. So I took very positively. I came back and I always th thought, so Indians can be proud. Indians can be proud that we are really on demand there. We can certainly be across the world. Yes, we can certainly. And we are. Many Indians are really doing extremely well outside the country. Yes. And uh, yeah. the next month also, I've got one training in Sri Lanka. The next month, I'm going one in Thailand. So I have to travel now. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So that's really nice. And the way you explained about how an Indian takes his professional work or job given to him in a very professional way. Yeah. And working that extra mile, when you work that extra mile, it's not 4.59. I could go beyond that too. Uh, because I that's professionalism, you know, just working a little harder or going the extra mile really contributes to your growth and success. So, would you like to share your favorite proverb or quotation? My one one thing really, two, I, I would like to say two, two quote. One is, um, if you don't stand up for something, if you don't stand up for something, you may fall for everything. This is one. Number two, face fear, it goes. Avoid fear, it grows. So these are the two quotes that is coming to my mind always. And whenever I'm in a training program, I always tell this to them. So when you don't stand up for something, you will fall for everything. Face fear. It goes, avoid fear, it grows. Excellent, excellent. A big takeaway for me. Yes. Thank you. And for our audience as well. Dear sir, till date, all the achievements that you've achieved till date, 
which is the most accomplished one. You say, wow, this is the achievement that I'm really happy with. Or the, this is the wow achievement. My completion of PhD. I should say that. What I'm supposed to complete in four years, I completed in five years because of the time factor, because of professional engagement. But I could complete it. And I have successfully completed a PhD in training and training efforts. That's what you can probably say that. Excellent, sir. Thank you, sir, for being with us and sure. sharing your time. We have a very important question coming up for you, sir. That is with regard to mental health. What are your views and thoughts? Because all these years you have had a lot of experience meeting different customers, meeting different people with regard to business. What is their mindset or how do you think is their mental state when they come in for training and when they finish off their training, what is their uh, you know, mindset when they go out of training? Because you're asking specifically to the uh, training part, mental, I won't say mental health, we can't comment about it. But when they come to a training program, some of them come with open mind. Some of them will come with a closed mind saying that I know everything. So usually after the training program is over. So those who came with a closed mind, they always say that even though I know many things, consciously we have not been doing. Therefore, they open up, open up slightly. Some of them frankly tell us that this is what I have learned from this training program. This happens in most of the training program. There used to be a self-realization for them, one or two elements which they have never thought about it, this training program has given them. So this thought always comes. I won't say all the under person will be like that, but majority will definitely come back and say that what we thought we know, but I think we don't know. That is one thing that always they used to make a comment like that. Yes, sir. Now, if it's only mental health, what would you uh, share or how would mental you like health alone is not sufficient according to me. <laughs> so therefore, there are multiple things. Example one is I should have a good physical health. Second is I should have a good mental health. Third is I should have a good social health. And fourth, the very, very important is I should have a spiritual health. So all the four are important. Mental health will only give, give us the knowledge and the logic. But the, the life is beyond the logic. So therefore, we need to certainly have all these four health, which has to be appropriately balanced. Excellent, sir. Excellent. But there are certain people who never open up easily and speak up easily. They are always to themselves. They wouldn't want to make either socialize or take care of their physical health or no, they are spiritually inclined. They are only connected to their minds. So with regard to them, would you like to share anything or give them some suggestion? I think every individual has got their own pluses and minuses. So they were there. The way that I am, for example, if I'm talking to you something, I am talking because of various other reasons. For example, my experience, my education, my bringing, uh, those who are around me, all those things play a major role. So one is as long as I, if I'm only seeing only from the trainee's point of view, so as long as they are there to learn. What has been, whatever that has been discussed. With that, it is okay because we should not come to any conclusion. Why should we make any comments and conclusions about them? If they are having doubts about the topic, I can clarify. If they don't have any doubts about the topic, absolutely fine. But when it comes to people coming openly, I would like to make one comment here. I am seeing this in training people. There are some people who learn by asking questions. There are some people who learn by listening more. So when people are different, I can't come and saying that you are not asking anything. You are not talking anything. Therefore, you are not a good learner. I can't do that because people are different. We should respect them as they are. Isn't it? So therefore, Nothing called introvert or extrovert. People will behave the way they are, what is appropriate for them on that particular moment. I really like this. I respect them for who they are and for what they are. You know, yeah. you know, just because they are silent doesn't mean that they are not knowledgeable or they are not connected to the session or it's just exactly. the way they are. Accept them. Exactly. The way. 
very nice that's beautiful dear sir now uh, we'll have a task for you imagine that we give you a time machine in your hand and we ask you to click the button and at the click of that button you'll be taken into the past era where you have to relive someone's life and return back if this was the case with you whose life you would love to relive and return back i wouldn't like to live a person's life but i would like to be a disciple of him okay. this is quite many years back i always used to wonder adi shankara's work what he has done many 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 centuries back and he has been instrumental in uh, uh, various uh, upbringing in various temples some temples he constructed some temples he consecrated some temples he renovated therefore maybe i would like to be a disciple of him to find out what is that he has done what is that he uh, uses uh, his uh, philosophy so i would like to be part of him not him because nobody can be him but i can be a part of him i can be a disciple of adi shankara maybe that's one time machine that means it is centuries back maybe in 800 ad i should go to <laughs> excellent adi shankara charya yes that's very nice that's a beautiful way so you keeping me like thinking as no i've really now gone into that era now of imagining him and you as his disciple and all of that getting to know as to how he has taken his journey forward and has impacted the world in a positive way so if you ever meet the almighty or the universal energy focuses on giving you a gift in the form of a superpower and they give you the choice to select your own superpower they'll give you just anything but you have to select it what would you select i want him to give uh, mukti to everybody self liberation to everybody would you like to elaborate on mukti as to what it is uh getting a complete freedom of uh, cycle of uh, life and birth that is mukti you are breaking away the cycles of life and death and then you are breaking away that is freedom therefore that is ultimate goal of any hindu who is there ultimate uh, goal of them so we would like to attain that maybe i would like him to give to everybody who is deserving yeah yeah it sometimes even i do think this in on the same lines of this mukti you know mm -hmm. i break the cycle of birth and death and just be relieved from everything excellent so are you a person who forgives others easily are you a person who forgives others easily do you forgive them easily yeah yeah definitely i will also forget Oh, great lucky you are if you say that if you can forget to on a scale of 1 to 10 how would you rate yourself with regard to forgiving others it would 9 9 1 to 10 is 9 yeah yes that's really nice so Because nobody has done anything voluntary with an intention they don't do they would have probably done by by mistake it is okay to forgive them though. that becomes a debate now because for me it becomes a debate because there are people who i have met i have seen and i have heard other people speaking their own experiences once a mistake twice a mistake but third time it's not a mistake so then that becomes a controversy and a debate too it will take a longer time maybe from your perspective i think you're right as long as the self has to realize that as long as they don't repeat the same mistake it is okay if they have the same mistake maybe it is a problem with them so why should i worry about it who am i to forgive them or forget them they are no, leading they their hurt life. you if they hurt you if are, if they are the i don't allow that to hurt i don't allow that to hurt that's it that's that's the answer i wanted don't allow it that's the message for all if people are hurting you once it's okay maybe twice okay if they are near and dear ones but more than that don't allow it that's the secret message that's hidden and it's revealed dear sir Uh, on the professional front there are there could be people who will always fo focus on criticism but there are some people who will focus on criticism but in a constructive way now i would like you being a leader being a trainer being a mentor and being the ceo of sales krita consulting how do you look at this constructive criticism 
feedback criticism is important constructive criticism is even more important this is nothing but giving a feedback to others what you have done good what you have not done good that's what exactly if a feedback has to be given and how other person is taking it is going to be helpful for them i am sure you must be knowing what we call as a johari window theory johari window theory is what i know you know what i know you don't know what i don't know you don't know so therefore there are four quadrants one is public one is private one is dark and one is a blind spot so dark is a area where we should take the feedback so i don't know but you know that is a dark for me i don't know you don't know is blind spot so therefore dark is a area where once i take the feedback i can reduce my darkness therefore i will know more that's it. that's exactly the premise i told you earlier uh, one has to be willing to learn if you're a learner constructive criticism is always good if i'm not a learner i i feel it is not it is important yeah much appreciated sir and thank you for explaining johari window once again in a very beautiful and in a very uh, clear pick a uh, clear way you've given a lot of clarity in a very simple way you put it for us now, any commoner could understand that because it's some sometimes there are people who complicate this when they explain johari window but you explained it so well you've done a great job so we come to an end to the main round of the interview and before we go on to the next round if i did not focus on any important area which you thought was important and you needed to share that with the public would you like to share your thoughts on them sir if i just skipped out on that i think you covered most of the things i think you covered most of the things yeah like you you may you may just remind me like is there anything else i we should focus on during this talk it would be of help to me like if you could recollect something else no nothing <laughs> okay maybe uh, towards the end if you could recollect something and let me know or if i could recollect it yeah, yeah, sure. and we can discuss uh, we'll come down now to this beautiful session of getting to know our celebrity and guest is dr rajiv joining us from mumbai maharashtra india we'll get to know about his likes and dislikes this interview is a personal and as well as a professional one more on the professional front but of course we'd love to know about the likes and dislikes of our celebrity and guest dear sir Are we good to go? Yeah. Yes. Have you thought of something? I see you in deep thought. Have you thought of something? Yeah. Have you thought of anything, or have you tried to recollect? Like, should we focus on these? No, areas? no, no. Like, no, no. Yeah. You, you are through. Yeah. Yes. So, your favorite breakfast? Upma. Self-made or prepared by? Prepared by my wife. That's really nice. And so, among all the twelve months, your favorite one. Okay, very interesting. June. Reason? My pet is born in that month. My daughter is also born in that month. We also got engaged in that month. So my I met my wife on that day, the first of June. Therefore, so many good things happened in the month of June. Yeah. How oh, nice! That's beautiful. And so, among all the seven days, your favorite one? Sunday. your favorite number one yes so did you ever regret spending money on a materialistic thing and after that realizing oh why did i spend my money on this did you ever face a situation like that oh no like maybe on a mobile or maybe on a vehicle or maybe on on some clothing or something like that no no <laughs> that does no, you're a great you're a great trainer and enabling people to make the right choice is because you're connected with sales and all of that so i think you pick up the best things that are really required so no bias remorse that's it there is no cognitive dissonance so when i want to buy i buy i don't want to buy i don't want to that's it but we women we do all the mistakes we buy all the things we don't want and then again we really repent and why did we buy this and waste our money we can't generalize it there are some women who are very prudent <laughs> yes sir. that's really nice thank you for standing up for all of them because i do this you know i buy something and then again i say why did i waste my money on that yeah. so your favorite music 
I like uh, Carnatic music, sometimes with fusion. First is Carnatic music, second is fusion. I like both. Yes, so that's really nice. Is it comfort or style? Comfort. Do you believe in second chances as well? Second chances? Yeah. What is that one thing you love about your job? It teaches me so many things. What is one thing that you hate about your job? We need a lot of uh, mental energy to think of many solutions. Is it tea or coffee? Tea. Off late coffee, but tea. <laughs> yes, a decaution or like milk tea. Yeah, yeah, decaution. Obviously, the option. The insect that you don't like. Mosquitoes. You like camping? Or like if you're told you, you've been traveling like to 20 plus countries and you intend to travel in the next month as well with regard to your profession. Now, do you like to camp or like stay in a hotel or like in a guest house? Where is your comfort? Hotel. Yes, sir. Any phobias? Acrophobia. Would you like to explain that to us in a in a line or two? Heights, heights. Acro, acro is height. Then you have to. The phobia. You have to travel by plane, right? And then, yes, that's. I, I'm saying if you go to the top of the mountain from the top, there, you down. see down. Oh yeah. Uh, that is a that will create a little. Yeah. I don't see down. And if you happen to see down, what happens to you? Like if you could share that. Fact. I'll get uh, dizziness if I happen to see down there. Yeah. Yes, so that's really nice to share that. Yes, so it's very clear for others too. So uh, now there's a question like this. Your the best part of the day when you feel very active, is it the morning, afternoon, evening or the late evening? For reading purpose, 4 to 6 in the evening. But to do yoga and meditation in the morning, early morning, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. I like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, now, this is a life skill. You know, you're very skilled with your professional work, all of that. And you've been now, you are the CEO now of a beautiful uh, consulting firm that is Sales Krita. Apart from that, a very personal question. Are you also very good in cooking, Samuel Varuma? Kana kana. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I love, I love cooking. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I cannot say that I, I can cook well, but I love cooking. Yeah. And is it like a vegetarian only? Yeah, only vegetarian. We take, we are vegetarians. Okay, yes. that's really nice. You like salty, sweet, spicy, or sour food, sir? Salt and spicy. An important question to you based on your profession. Is it life is all about money? Is it all about money or happiness? Because sales, sales, it deals with money. You know? It's all concerned with those aspects. Is it? No, no. Money can only do certain things. I think ultimately it is happiness. There are people who are happy without money. There are people with money, they're not happy. If ultimately, we need to be happy in life. Excellent. excellent. Happiness. Happy. The answer is happiness. Yeah. Beautiful, sir. Thank you for sharing. A big takeaway for all of us. So, how do you look at yourself as an introvert, extrovert, or an ambivert? I have not thought about this terminology. In fact, I used to read about it long back. You remember I told you in 19, uh, in, when I was a 19 year old, I used to read. Introvert. That is the time where I was introduced about introvert, extrovert, and ambivert. Um, see, today we are we have come to a stage where we need to do what is appropriate in that occasion. If I have to be an introvert, I will be introvert. If I have to be extrovert, I have to be extrovert. See, one of the important traits of a leader is you need to be adaptable. So better adapt to situation. Where I should speak, I will speak. Where I should not speak, I'll keep quiet. So therefore, we can't brand people that he's an introvert, he's an extrovert. 
That's why I told you there are some people in the training program also. They don't talk much. It's okay. But they listen. But there are people who will talk more. We can't say he's an extrovert. Therefore, why should we brand people? They are not, by simply branding, they are not like that. They are much different people. Therefore, I, I think the answer is I'm passing that. The question to the, the answer to the question that you asked, introvert, extrovert, ambivert. I'm all, I would say that. <laughs> Depending on situation. Yes. As I like this word, adaptability. And that is a very core one which we have all have to focus on. No matter what you face in life, you have to be adaptable and should be able to you know change with circumstances. And because change is the only constant, adapt yourself to change. So when you're all alone and no one is with you at that time, no gadgets as well, no book, pen, paper, nothing. You're sitting on a chair alone in a, in a room. You have no access to uh, you know outsiders or family members as well. You're all alone. At that moment, you're connected to your thoughts. You have nothing to do but just be connected with your own self, with your thoughts, obviously. So where do your thoughts take you to the past, present or future if you are in that situation, being all to yourself? I'd rather do meditation, thinking nothing. No phone calls will come. I'm very glad. <laughs> <laughs> that's really nice. So meditation, that's really nice. So like concentrate on your breathing, concentrate on the sounds around you. That's really nice. Yeah. Yes. So you like socializing or me time? Once again, depends situation. So not any, we, we can't say binary. In example, 50% of the time we are social social animal. We would like to socialize. Another 50% of the time I would like to have that meet. Mm -hmm. So what do I enjoy? I enjoy both. That's it. Excellent. Enjoy both. Yeah. If you were given a choice to visit a beach or a forest for a few hours. Forest. <laughs> yes. Is it song or dance? Song. Were you obliged to sing a song for us? No, I, I'm sorry. I don't remember lyrics at all. But I love to listen to that. Uh, okay, at least like um, which, which kind of songs like or from which language you're very much interested to Karnatic, listen? Karnatic, Tamil. Yeah. Tamil, Tamil songs. But I don't, I don't, I don't remember it. What about Bollywood songs like you are in Mumbai and no, lots no, of no. songs are all go on there? No? no, no. Yes, that's really nice. I'd like to hear you speak one line at least in Marathi. One line. No, no God. No, no. no. One you line. ask me to speak in... No, I don't know. Okay, I'll ask you something in Marathi. Let me see. Because you're in Mumbai. So, uh, Marathi is the major language over there. What, you know, one, uh, one major language. Tujja uh, kai. If I'm getting that right. Simple. Tujja kai. No, I don't understand. You I ask me in Hindi. I, can... <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting it right because I learned this. Tujja Naoka is Majana, name. What's your name? Such a name. Is it okay? Tujja Naoka. I don't know if my question is correct because a long time back, I have that connection with Mumbai as I was born there. That's why I... No. You ask me in Tamil, I can answer that. Ask me in Hindi, I can answer that. Okay. Aapka naam? Aapka shubh naam kya hai? Aapka pura shubh naam? Take it. Mera naam Rajiv hai. That's really nice. And we uh, we feel really happy when we can speak or converse in other languages too. It's really a pleasure to learn, right? So, yes, that's really nice. I little had a little fun at that moment when we were sharing. So, is it a two-wheeler? Is it a four-wheeler? Or is it walking? Where do you feel comfortable at this stage? Four-wheeler. If you're given a choice to select between a book and your favorite music, what would you select? Yes, sir. Book, book, yes, sir. Book, book. Okay. If you were offered ice creams and you were mm. asked to select a flavor of your choice, which one would you select? I don't. You, you, you I, I'm not going to eat it, isn't it? I, I will choose uh, butterscotch, but otherwise, uh, I'm not very. What to say? Fancy about taking ice creams, but if at all, I'll take butterscotch. Yes. Otherwise, orange candy. Okay, orange candy. Yeah. That's more healthier, I think, right? The orange yeah. Candy. Yes. 
Dear sir, what about the vada pav in Mumbai? Have you ever tasted it? No. I don't take garlic. Therefore, I don't take that. Okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Your favorite season, sir? Season? Winter. Yes, sir. A beautiful day in one word. Beautiful day in one word. A beautiful day, day in one word. Pardon? In one word. Yes, sir. Beautiful day, a pleasant day. Yeah, pleasant. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, till date, the best gift that you've ever received, till date. Books by, by many people, yeah. I would you'd like to mention the name of the book or something? First book was gifted by one Miss uh, that Ayn Rand I told you, not last time. It was gifted by my brother's friend. That yes. was the first book, yeah. So before we conclude this session for today, we've taken a lot of your time. You've been very patient and very polite. Uh, one last request is you have to give us three gifts in the form of three beautiful words, empowering words, and then we end the session for today. Uh, we'd like you to share three magical words apart from please, sorry, and thank you. Learn, learn, learn. Wow. You started it at the initial stages and towards the end as well. It's learn, learn, and learn. That's a continuous process. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. And we were really enlightened and enthralled with all the sharings that you've been sharing. You've been very patient and polite with your time. Thank you so much. God bless you and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and thanks for your uh, organizing this interview. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank no. you. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. My dear friends, thank you for being a part of our journey, all our guests and of course our celebrity as well. If you like what we are doing, stay connected with us and bond with us. And of course, if you like this video, do share it with others. Let it reach the right kind of people. And of course, you have to focus on sales. And if you'd like to connect with Sales Krita Consulting, you are free to connect with Sir. He will be there to help you and guide you in your business. Stay safe and stay blessed. Have a wonderful time. Thank you.